If you wanna make whatever you play on your guitar stand out, then today's Acoustic Tuesday show is for you. You'll be learning some staccato and dynamic techniques so you can expand your tonal toolbox. Go ahead and grab your guitar because today's show will have you learning and playing from start to finish. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 227 of the Acoustic Tuesday show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. Have you ever tried percussive strumming on the guitar? Well, recently a TAC family member did and she had some problems. And in today's show, I'm gonna actually fix those problems. You're also gonna see which guitar lick the TAC family is working on today. And it goes by the name of Special Swamp Sauce, and it contains copious amounts of staccato. Plus your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits, which includes a ninja repair woman, a new album in all of its glory, and much, much more. But first, go ahead and grab your guitar. It's time to add a new tool to your tonal toolbox. We're gonna kick things off today with a segment entitled Lesson Behind the Lick. Every Acoustic Tuesday show, I show you what guitar lick the TAC family is working on. Today will be no different. But behind that guitar lick, there's usually a driving force, a technique or a concept that you can actually add to your own playing in many other areas, well beyond just a singular guitar lick. So that's the whole point of this segment. Here's how it works. First, I'm gonna share with you what the concept or technique is. Second, I'm gonna share with you what it does for your playing, what it offers you. Third, I'm gonna share with you why it works. What are the elements that make this technique so effective? And then lastly, I'll share with you some examples. So if you don't have your guitar yet, go ahead and grab it and let's get started. The concept for today is staccato, adding staccato to your guitar playing. Now, if you've never heard this term before, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, first off, don't worry, you're not alone. Let's go ahead and get on the same page. Staccato is essentially choking off the note so that it doesn't ring, so that it doesn't sustain. Let me show you an example. I'll play two phrases on the guitar. The first one, I will not use staccato. The second one, I will use staccato. What you're gonna notice is that the first one, without staccato, the notes are gonna ring and they're gonna sustain. The second one, you're gonna notice that the notes, bam, they present themselves and then they very quickly go away. That is staccato. Here's how it sounds. So you can very quickly see that staccato is, it feels kind of choppy. And you might think that's a bad thing. Well, neither is good or bad, whether you play with staccato or not. It just gives you some options. So what does staccato offer your guitar playing? Well, it actually offers quite a bit, but I'm gonna cite three things that I think it really helps with. The first is that it emphasizes phrases. When you add staccato to a single note phrase, it makes it stand out. It makes it almost have an exclamation point behind it. The second thing that it adds to your playing, or the second thing that it does for your playing, is it cleans up your playing. Sometimes when you're playing a single note passage, the notes can all ring and sustain, and pretty soon they start building on top of one another, creating kind of a, a glob of sound. That's okay in some scenarios, but sometimes you don't want that. That's where staccato really shines because it allows each note to really stand out and be heard without interference from anything else. The final thing that it offers your playing or the third thing that it offers your playing is that it really allows you to control your dynamics. Dynamics being how loud or how soft you play. It's another level of control when it comes to dynamics. So it allows you to play a note loud, but it doesn't come across as abrasive, as if you were playing everything loud. Because there's such a short decay or no decay, it allows the note to pop at a loud volume and then very quickly go away. So the perception is, is that the note stands out, it's loud, but it's not grating. It's not offensive in any way, shape, or form. So, so why does staccato work? What's the function behind it? What's the driving force that makes this technique work? Well, this is very much not a music theory principle. It has nothing to do with note selection. It has everything to do with technique and controlling dynamics. Here's why it works. And I'm gonna draw a parallel here. If you walked into a library and everybody had their head down, they were reading books, they were studying, and you stood there and you clapped once extremely loud, it would startle everybody and everybody would look up 
because you just drew attention to yourself. The library is a quiet place. That's exactly why staccato works. It allows you to very quickly make a dynamic spike that calls attention to what you're playing and then go back into your solo or rhythm guitar, whatever you happen to be doing. So now that you know a little bit of the inner workings behind why staccato works, now let's go ahead and look at some examples. I'm gonna show you three different ways to use staccato in your guitar playing. The first example I have for you is, is probably the most common one, and that's to use it in a single note phrase. I'm gonna play for you a very familiar phrase. The first pass I won't use staccato, and the second pass I will. And I think very quickly you'll notice that when you use staccato paired with single note lines or single note riffs, it makes them pop. It makes them almost sound iconic, much as this riff. Here's how it sounds. Very quickly you'll see that using staccato makes those single notes pop. It almost makes any single note riff that you play that much more iconic. Easy to say after using it on an iconic riff. But I want you to try it. If there's ever a single note passage that you might play or maybe a bass line. In fact, I'll give you another example. But I want you to use it in your own playing to see if you can make something you already know sound completely different. Here's another example from the blues world. It almost gives this awesome feel to whatever you're playing. Okay, let's move on to the second example. The common misconception is that staccato doesn't really have a home when you're playing rhythm guitar. I beg to differ. It actually adds some wonderful texture, some wonderful layers to your rhythm guitar offerings. Let me show you an example. I'm gonna cross pick over a power chord here. And I'm just gonna do a simple alternate picking approach across three strings, and at first I won't use staccato. And then I will use staccato. You're gonna see an ongoing theme here because I want you to compare and contrast the technique versus, the, the presence of the technique versus the presence of not using the technique or staccato versus non-staccato. So again, I'll be cross picking across three strings. At first I won't use staccato, then I will use it. And then I'll kind of explain how this can be used in your rhythm guitar playing. Here goes nothing. So you might think to yourself, well, that first pass did sound like something I could use for rhythm, but that second pass, I don't really buy it. Well, that second pass with staccato has some rhythmic drive, and I want you to think of yourself doing that while someone else is strumming a G chord. Okay, it works great in a double guitar scenario when there's more than one guitar playing rhythm. This allows you to have, uh, allows you to add a different texture, a different layer, and make the, the rhythm guitar of a song or the rhythm piece of a song a little bit more complex, a little bit more interesting, a little bit more three-dimensional. Okay, the final way that staccato can really spruce up your playing, it's actually another way to achieve that staccato, that choked off note is palm muting. Now, palm muting is a technique that we can do a, an entire show on. In fact, I think we will do an entire show on palm muting. But what palm muting does is it allows you to achieve staccato, but also get a little bit more information from the string. Because palm muting allows the, the string to ring just a little bit longer than if you fully choke off the note. So think of palm muting as a step in between staccato and non-staccato. It's another great way to kind of add some dynamics while getting most of what you would want out of that technique, that staccato technique. Here's how that would sound. I'm gonna go ahead and play you three different things. I'm gonna play a fully sustained cross-picked chord, just like you heard. I'm gonna play a palm-muted cross-picked chord, and then I'm gonna play a staccato cross-picked chord. So you can kind of see the different gradations of how staccato can work in your rhythm guitar playing. Here's how that would sound. So as you can see, that, that palm muting adds a completely different texture. Essentially, it allows you access to that staccato technique with a completely different timbre, a completely different nature of the sound that you're offering. 
pretty darn cool. Now you get a chance to see Staccato in action in the lick that the Tack family is working on today. Every single Tuesday, I share with you the lick that the Tack family is working on. Because within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, every single day we rotate through the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, we do a technique challenge, Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge, Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge, Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge, and Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It is Tuesday. The Tack family is working on a guitar lick that just so happens to contain the staccato technique, and here it is. I hope you're hungry. I hope you're hungry for the blues. Your Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge is entitled Special Swamp Sauce. So as you're sitting there with a plate full of blues, you just throw a little special swamp sauce on to give it that extra swamp flavor. Today's lick actually accentuates a specific theme uh, this week within Tack. All the challenges follow this theme, and that is kind of using a, a staccato or a, a rather bitey approach to playing. This could come in the form of a rake. This could come in the form of choking off notes to kind of give them a, a, a quick exclamation point. It's like you're expecting the note to decay, but it doesn't. It cuts right off, which certainly grabs the attention of any listener. This lick utilizes that in a couple different locations. So let me go ahead and play it for you. See if you can pick up on the locations. And then I'm going to place this lick in just a general finger style pattern so you can actually use it in your blues playing. Here's how it sounds. As you can tell, it's rather abrupt in terms of how it ends. And that's a great technique to use if you want to call attention to what you're playing, or it could actually match the genre that you're playing. If you're playing kind of ragtime, a lot of times there's this, this pumping of the bass that really uh, works well when you cut the notes short. You don't allow them to naturally decay. You kind of, kind of choke them off. Anyways, I, I want to show you how to use this lick in just a general finger-picking pattern. But first, if you want to learn this note-for-note, note, tack fam, go ahead and log in. This is your daily challenge. Click on Start Challenge. That'll take you to the teaching video. Once you get it under your fingers, you can move to the Play Along video. Pick a speed that's comfortable for you. Don't forget to click on that tab icon in the lower right-hand corner. This way, you can pull up the tab right next to the video and see everything side by side so you can learn it the best you can. Okay, this lick, Special Swamp Sauce. It's a, it's a lick in the key of E. It's, a, it's very much a bluesy lick. And the way I'd like to, to show it to you is just simply using it in between finger picking an E7 chord. Uh, it's a great way to uh, kind of uh, punctuate playing just a general E, uh, an E blues chord, an E7, I should say. Um, this is great for after a verse. This is great for entering a solo, uh, if you want to use it that way. But all in all, I think the best way to approach this is to see it in context, and then you can kind of take it wherever you want. Okay, so here's how it sounds uh, in the context of just finger picking an E7 chord. So just kind of a great way to, you can even use it to end a song if you want, but I just wanted you to hear it in terms of uh, the timing window that it occupies and how you could best maybe transition to it or use it again as you're simply finger picking. Okay, I wanna get back to the show, but first I wanna talk about small wins and how necessary they are for your progress and for your guitar routine habit. You know, uh, I read the book Tiny Habits by PhD BJ Fogg, and he's a habit science uh, professor, I believe at Stanford. Yeah, at Stanford. And one of the strongest uh, indicators on whether or not you're going to keep a habit, one of the best ways to actually keep a habit or lock one in is to celebrate it every single time that you do it. How does that correlate to guitar playing? Well, your guitar routine is a habit, and it's a habit that you wanna keep. You wanna keep that consistent guitar routine so you continually progress, so you continually have fun, and it becomes this kind of unconscious part of your life, almost like brushing your teeth. You don't think about brushing your teeth, you just do it. I'd love for guitar playing to be something that just organically is a part of your life. The way that you can best position yourself to do that is to celebrate small wins. Every single time you're done playing guitar for the day, look back at your playing session and ask yourself, what went well? 
See, the thing is, is we can always find negative things if we look for them. You know that cliche, you're your own worst critic? Well, that's very true. It's cliche for a reason. But I want you to specifically look for something positive. Maybe it's the fact that you sat down to play guitar for that day. Maybe your schedule was crazy and you carved out the time. That's a huge win. Maybe you tried fingerstyle for the first time. That's a huge win. Maybe you got some chord transition you've been looking or you've been trying to get for a really long time and you finally got it buzz free and super smooth. That's a small win. I want you to note those small wins every single time you play the guitar because that positive reinforcement will reinforce the habit you're trying to make, i.e. your guitar routine. So next time you sit down to play, after you're done, look back and say, what went well? And celebrate that small win. I hope you enjoyed that immersion into the wide, weird world of staccato. Now you'll notice I still have my guitar out because, well, we're not done playing. A TAC family member asked a really cool question about percussive guitar and, well, I'm going to show you how to do that here in a moment. But first, I have a question for you. Actually, I actually have two questions for you. Did any light bulbs go off for you today? If so, if you had a light bulb moment, let me know what it was in the comments below. The second question I have for you is, I'm just curious if you're digging the lesson behind the lick segment. This is a new experiment and I just kind of want to get a read of if you're enjoying it, if you're loving learning these new techniques. Either way, just let me know in the comments below. I want to turn back the clock two separate times. I want to visit two past episodes of the Acoustic Tuesday show. First, episode 222, where I talked about my five favorite Larivee guitars. Turns out that amongst the Acoustic Tuesday viewing audience, there are quite a few Larive lovers. So if you're looking for a comprehensive list of awesome Larive models, just visit the comments section of episode 222. And while I'm at it, I wanna thank everybody who made a comment on that show for, well, making such an awesome list. The next show I wanna visit is episode 221, where I talked about Doc Watson and his guitar style. There was a question asked in the comments that I thought, we should probably tackle in today's show. And it has to do with percussive guitar. This is Masha T22's comment and question. For all those wondering, Doc Watson was more than the subject of an old Geico commercial. Can someone help me out with something? I can't seem to get that percussive strum and can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. Is it that I'm not plugged into an amp or mic'd up and it's just not audible? Am I using the wrong part of my fingers, hands, nails? Am I striking in the wrong spot along the strings? Is it not audible on 11 to 52 Daddario XT Phosphor Bronze strings that are coated? Is it a combo of several factors? It's driving me nuts that I literally hear nothing because I really want to hear and use percussive strums while I play. I've tried knocking on the soundboard or bridge instead to make up for it, but it's awkward at times and not always the sound that's called for since it's not as soft as a percussive strum. Thanks in advance. I love this question because the percussive strum, the percussive hit is one of the most fun techniques that you can use while playing the acoustic guitar. And in your question, you listed a lot of things where it could be going wrong. Is it the strings? Is it the amp? Is it, a, is it the pickup? What's happening? And I think you nailed it when you asked the question, is it my fretting hand? Is it my picking hand? Is it where I'm hitting the strings? Because those all allude to the foundational technique. The technique is the bedrock for all of this. If you don't have sound technique, you'll never get the sound that you want. So very quickly, let's go over some things that could help. Now, first I wanna talk about how your picking hand approaches the strings. So for the sake of the fretting hand, let's make sure it doesn't do anything, okay? Let's just hold the strings. You're not fretting anything, you're simply holding the strings so that they don't vibrate, so that they don't make any sound. As for your picking hand, we're gonna go over some quick technique adjustments that may help right out of the gate. So for the sake of making things easy, I'm gonna assign some fingers to strings. Your thumb's gonna be on the A string, your index finger on the D, middle on the G, and ring on the B. Doesn't sound like much, and it shouldn't because your fretting hand is muting the strings. We're just gonna talk about that percussive hit. So what I want you to do is keep your elbow anchored on the guitar, simply move your hand away from the strings, and then use that, that elbow as almost a fulcrum of a lever, and just let the strings or let the, let the fingers fall into the strings. Now I'm exaggerating the movement here. Okay, try and land those fingers on the strings they're assigned to. 
If they don't, that's totally okay. But I want you to get comfortable hitting the strings with intention, okay? Notice that my elbow is staying on the face of the guitar and that I'm just using it as a pivot point, as a fulcrum of a lever. Okay, that's the first thing that I want you to start with. The second thing is where you're hitting the strings. And you're gonna notice that if I hit the strings closer to the bridge, I'm not gonna get a very loud sound. It's not gonna sound that good. I'm not gonna get that percussive hit. However, if I move my picking hand towards the neck of the guitar over the sound hole, automatically I start getting a little bit more of that percussive, almost that snare sound, okay? Why is that? Well, it's because that percussive sound is coming from the strings actually making contact with the frets right around this area. So the closer you are to that area, the easier it is to get the strings to hit the frets. Now I'm not talking hit in an aggressive way. We just want the strings kind of tapping on those frets because that's what gives us that snare sound. If you're down by the bridge, the strings aren't pliable enough there. They're not loose enough there. They don't have enough bend to get the strings to hit the frets. Whereas over the sound hole, they certainly do. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing is to make sure that your picking hand is loose. Almost think of it like, like you're knocking on a door. You're not thinking of it too much. You're not trying to pound on the door. You're simply using your knuckles to knock on the door. But instead of your knuckles, it's your fingers. It's the, kind of the top of your fingernails and the side of your thumb. Okay, so just a nice loose hand, kind of just hitting into those strings. You're not hitting the strings and pulling off because that's not gonna allow you to hit the strings confidently and get that percussive sound. So let your hand kind of fall into the strings, let gravity do the work. Once you get comfortable getting the sound that you want without fretting anything, then it's time to actually work on the fretting. And a great pattern that I like to use, especially if you're first learning this technique or refining the technique, is to simply hold down a C chord, keep those picking hand fingers assigned to the strings that I just had mentioned at the beginning, and all I want you to do is hit the thumb, and then hit the index, middle, and ring, so you're plucking those strings. That's the one and beat, one and, and then come down on two for that percussive beat, okay? So it's one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four. So I hope that certainly helps you, and I hope it certainly helps round out that approach to the percussive strum. Uh, I think a lot of times we hear that percussive strum and we just want to attack it right away. We want that end result. There's some, some minutia to it that if you pay attention to those, those nuances, the technique will come a lot easier. Okay, stretch your fingers. That was a lot of guitar playing. I want to head to the UK now and check out a guitar arsenal. A guitar arsenal that proves you don't need a bunch of guitars to be a guitar player. This guitar arsenal comes from Terry Bass from London, and here's what he's got. A Tanglewood TW12NS, the only guitar I have. And he also happens to be wearing an awesome Acoustic Tuesday for Vets t-shirt. It just goes to show it's not about the size of the guitar arsenal. It's about the fact that you have a guitar arsenal. One guitar, five guitars, 20 guitars, it doesn't matter. I want to feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show, and here's how you get featured. I want to propose to you a win-win-win scenario. I want to feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I want to feature you and your guitar arsenal, or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar arsenal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. It's acoustic news you can use time. And the first thing I'm gonna show you will 100% blow your mind. 
you literally will not believe what you're seeing. I want to draw your attention to Iris Car Restorations. Now, I came across this post where there was a repaired F-hole. And after the repair, I couldn't even tell it was ever damaged in the first place. And then I started checking out Iris Carr's Instagram profile. And she is a wizard of repair. From one repair to the next, she does absolutely amazing work with incredible attention to detail. I know it's not necessarily acoustic guitars, but I just wanted to share her with the world because just wow, just, just absolutely 100% wow. Um, yeah, a pure wizard indeed. Next up, I have a post from Atkin Guitars that I wanna share with you. I wanna find it here on my phone. It's a post of a picture of a guitar that caught my eye because I thought, whoa, that is one special guitar. And upon reading the caption, here's the question they ask. Should we bring the quote, the 36 back? And I'm like, yeah, why didn't you do that yesterday? This apparently is a model they had made in the past and they're wondering if they should bring it back. It's a very, um, I can't remember the model of, of guitar that Robert Johnson played. Uh, it's a very Gibson, Robert Johnson-esque shape, and it looks like they've done a masterful job on it. So to answer your question, Atkin Guitars, yes, yes, you should have brought the 36 back yesterday because the world needs it. You all make incredible instruments, and I'm sure you do an awesome job on that guitar. Plus, Gibson's not currently making one, and they should be because Robert Johnson played one of their guitars. So yeah, bring the 36 back. Hashtag bring the 36 back, or however hashtags work. I don't even know how they work. Uh, <laughs> next up on my news list is just really more of a follow-up. The Punch Brothers released an album, Hell on Church Street. And interesting to find out, they started recording that prior to Tony Rice passing. I had no idea. I thought this album was a tribute to Tony Rice post his passing away. Not the case at all. So I thought that was an interesting twist, but I've also been listening to the album a lot. And it is a, it's a masterpiece. It's, it's a masterpiece. Tony Rice's Church Street Blues album is a masterpiece. The Punch Brothers Hell on Church Street album is a masterpiece. It's not a direct copy. They're completely different, but capture the same vibe, the same creativity, and the same passion for these amazing, this, this amazing collection of songs. So please check that out. Listen to it if you have not already. The final piece of news I have for you is this. The Lost Dog Street Band just released their newest album, Glory, a couple of weeks ago. And you know, Benjamin Todd is an incredible songwriter, and when him and Ashley play together, it's like magic. When 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 it's it's not just Benjamin Todd. You know, I've I've touted Benjamin Todd's songwriting ability before in regard to his solo albums, but when he's a part of the band with Ashley, um, it, it's it's also magic. It's a different kind of magic, but definitely gives me the same kind of goosebumps. So I wanted you hear I wanted you to hear a new song off of their new album, Glory. The song is entitled. Jalisco Bloom, and if you check out the full version that Western AF shot on YouTube, you see a little bit, you'll hear a little bit of a story about the song prior to them playing it, but we're gonna jump right into the song. Here it is. Mother pled with me to abstain That temptress of the desert of Galve when I die, I spread my heart in that old Elisco bloom. Mother pled with me to abstain. Now keep in mind that album is out and you can order a vinyl copy which I strongly recommend. On that note, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. Next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show, you'll be learning guitar lessons from Earl Scruggs. You'll be learning guitar, not banjo lessons from Earl Scruggs. It's setting up to be a barn burner of a show and I certainly want you to check it out. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. 
right here on YouTube. Before I let you go for the day, I want to remind you of one thing, and that is this. Your guitar success, however you define it, directly relates to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers, be nice and play guitar. Guitar Geeks Unite. Thank you.